continue our focus on frontier markets, we move on to Côte d'Ivoire, West Africa's second largest economy, and of course, a gateway into Francophone West Africa. We're joined in the studios in Johannesburg by Nathaniel Ingika, he's head of investment at FMI Africa, to give us his thoughts on this very important frontier market on the African continent. Nathaniel, it's great to have you on our show today. And, you know, like I mentioned earlier, it seems Côte d'Ivoire is the gateway into Francophone West Africa. Just talk us through your thoughts on how that economy is shaping up. Of course, it's, it's gone through its crisis over the last decade, but it seems right now from all the rhetoric from, the, uh, from, from foreign investors and, of course, observers of that economy today, they are on the right path. Yeah, uh, are you, Wale? Uh, yes, uh, Cote d'Ivoire uh, is the anchor economy, I would say, in the West African region, the Frank-speaking West African region. It's uh, part of the uh, UMO region, which is the economic and uh, monetary authority of West Africa, which has about eight uh, states in it. And I think Cote d'Ivoire is uh, la the largest economy there. Uh, unfortunately, over the past decade, right. I mean, it's been going through a lot of challenges. You recall the civil war, which came to an end in 2003 and uh, the post-election yeah. crisis in 2011, 2012, which has uh, since been resolved. Um, I think uh, from about 1960 to about 1970 or the 1980 or there about, Cote d'Ivoire managed to quadruple its, uh, its GDP and uh, you know, its population doubled through, uh, at that, during that period. But then it had kind of 20 years of uh, stagnated growth. But I should say uh, after a contraction in the economy by about 5% in 2011, mostly due to the crisis, it really rebounded last year and grew about 8.1% and uh, is focused this year to actually grow at about 7%, which is quite uh, material uh, compared to its peers. I think uh, the real drivers are really the structural reforms that are actually happening. Uh, you would know Cote d'Ivoire is the largest producer of cocoa in the world. It produces about 40, 35 to 40% right. of the world's cocoa production. and. Uh, it has really capitalized on the high prices. Unfortunately, since the reforms, the prices have kind of dipped, but uh, it has really done uh, quite well to capitalize on the high cocoa prices. Uh, it also produces rubber and coffee, which are uh, its uh, second and third largest exports. The economy is uh, broadly dependent on agriculture, by the way. And uh, what's been happening is that rubber, since about uh, the crash of 2008, the crash of markets in 2008, kind of took a dip. But uh, it resurfaced around 2010, then took another dip around 2012 and started uh, kind of coming back up towards the end of 2012, start of 2013. Coffee has remained kind of stable. Uh, cocoa on the other side has kind of come off. So really the economy is yeah. uh, subject to the, you know, to the volatility of these uh, soft commodities which it produces. Uh, at the, and and at, on the other end, it's also been subjected to the, all the political, the political crisis. Uh, when you look right, at it, of course, uh, it's, it's been hurt. When I you was look at make it, a point uh, that of course it has been hurt a little bit um, from the impact of that political crisis. But m we've now seen some what people are calling sound economic reforms in the tax structure and of course in reforms of its cocoa sector. Talk to us about your th about how important these reforms are for this economy going forward. Yes, surely these reforms are quite critical for Cote d'Ivoire because uh, you realize. Uh, Soon after the crisis, uh, you know, Cote d'Ivoire is kind of a darling of the Western world, uh, you know, with the IMF debt cancellation in uh, mid-2012 under the right. enhanced highly indebted uh, poor countries scheme. And uh, just earlier this year, uh, the U.S. actually did some debt forgiveness of Cote d'Ivoire for about $250 million. We've seen uh, the IMF uh, managing director, Christine Lagarde, was there earlier this year and she actually was talking of uh, what she called the Ivorian miracle which uh, is kind of doubling their GDP by 2020 and she was actually saying that's actually achievable uh, through certain reforms. You recall that 20, in 2009 or thereabout Cote d'Ivoire issued a euro bond about 2.3 billion US dollar euro bond which it uh, defaulted on some of its uh, coupon payments but uh, is making good in a right. scheme which they have uh, brought to investors that they, they are, they are going to be uh, making good for those uh, defaulted payments until about 2014. And then uh, they afterwards, uh, it's, it's up to really cleaning up its, its reputation. Uh, all this forgiveness and uh, all the cash that's now available in terms of investment in Cote d'Ivoire is being directed towards uh, yeah, infrastructure, energy, telecoms, transportation. And uh, we're actually starting to see uh, a lot of activity, especially on the, on the boss, the regional boss, the BRVM in uh, stocks, which are actually listed in these sectors because um, there are a lot of government contracts to try to, to really build the backbone of the economy because that's going to be quite critical. But on the other end, uh, mm -hmm. the IMF uh, reforms um, also require that then the, the country can collect tax. So you find there were things such as the juice tax, which was introduced 
on uh, uh, rubber exports, they also tax on uh, cocoa to just try because uh, I mean somebody has to pay for, for that debt and uh, if the country has got the capacity right. to pay for it, that's uh, what's been doing. Okay. Okay, as, as we round this up, a quick thought on a quick thought on the focus sectors for investors. We know that, of course, agriculture goes without saying with them being a major cocoa producer. But people are talking about transportation as they as they reconstruct the economy, if you like, if they, as they upgrade the infrastructure out there. Talk to us about the opportunities that you're seeing for investors that are going into that space, into that country. Yeah, I mean, going to that country, as I mentioned, there's, uh, there, there's a lot of uh, focus in the energy sector. They want to ramp up their production of electricity. Mm -hmm. The transportation is quite critical because uh, being uh, an agriculture-based economy, you produce your agricultural commodities and you want to take them to market. So you need a strong uh, uh, transportation sector that can actually then take you know, your cocoa, your rubber to the port so that it can then be, be exported. Uh, you've also seen in telecommunications, you have to strengthen the telecommunications. We've got big companies such as Sonatel, which are actually not uh, of uh, Ivorian origin, but you know it's a kind of part of a regional trading block, which is quite integrated. So you find uh, those sectors have really been quite uh, key. And if you look at the way the BRVM, which is the regional boss, has been performing, it kind of mirrors that uh, you know the performance of that sector. Some of the best performing sectors in 2012 were the infrastructure sector companies such as CIE, which is uh, the electricity company. Yeah, yeah the, those are the best performers. All right. Okay, final point will be around trade. How do you see the dynamics for this country changing? Of course, cocoa will always be important. But going forward, what are your thoughts about um, how this country would be engaging the rest of the world and, of course, the rest of the African continent? Uh, I believe, uh, you know, as you said, uh, uh, agriculture is going to remain being critical. And, uh, but most of the agricultural products are actually exported to Europe. Uh, you're going to find that uh, the critical mass comes in them being part of a regional trading block. And uh, that's that way they're able to expand their reach from, say, uh, 20 million population to about 100 million population within that region. And then you find that intra-region trading, which, because uh, they are, the OMO is actually a trading block that looks at uh, you know, both trade and currency, a common currency. So you find uh, Cote d'Ivoire is actually able to use its size to access the other local markets such as you know the Benins, the Togos, the Nigers. Uh, unfortunately, you know, recently the region has just uh, undergone some turmoil. You know, Mali has gone through problems, Niger has gone through problems. But I think intra-regional trade is right. actually something that's quite developed in that.